of, uh, you know, 10 great people, that it becomes self-policing as to who they let into that group. So I consider the most important job of someone uh, like myself is recruiting. We agonized over hiring. We had interviews. I could go back and look at some of the interviews of Jen. Hi, guys. It's Chastity Child. And go through <coughs> Uh, a new interviewee would talk to everybody in the building at least once and maybe a couple times and then come back for another round of interviews and then we'd all get together and talk about it. And then they could fill out an application. No, they no, never filled out. The most out. crucial Nobody part of the interview, at least to my mind, was when we finally decided we liked them enough to show them the Macintosh prototype and then we sat them down in front of it. And if they just kind of were bored or said, this is a nice computer, we didn't want it. We, we wanted their eyes to light up and them to get really excited and then we knew they were one of us. Hey guys, it's Chastity Child. How are you? So, I just showed you a bit of um, Steve Jobs' 10 Rules for Success. And I actually did a video similar to, to that a while back, talking about how when you go into a meeting, how you should be looking for others that are equally as excited about what you're doing. People should be excited about your prototype. People should be excited about the plan and about your vision. When you share your vision, with, let me back up. Let, let's just talk about building a great team, just in a separate state. Let's not talk about how the reaction should be. Let's talk about the process of building a great team. So you know that you have a great, you have an awesome plan. You know you have an awesome prototype. You know your vision is great. And you're ready to share your vision. So who else would you ask to, to watch your child, your baby? Who do you know that you, you'd feel comfortable enough to allow to, to share a, a visit with your baby, with your newborn? Wouldn't that be like a family member? A cousin, a sister, a mother? Who would you welcome into your 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 dream? Who who would you welcome in to share your baby with to present your baby with here? I want to share my baby with you. Okay? It would be like selecting your your baby's father or your um the mother of your child. So, in order to make that decision, you have to remember family and business are not always a good combination. Even friends and business are not always a good combination. It doesn't always work in, in our favor. And it's not that there aren't some families where it has worked. But it appears to me that as businesses get to different levels, that as businesses change, so do the mentality of the, those involved. Um, I'll, I'll take myself for instance, Chastity Child started with me going directly to a family member that I felt was educated in this field and not only educated in this field, but someone that was a close, so quote unquote, family friend. And at the end of the day, <laughs> she was the one who let me down the hardest when she wasn't able to follow through on commitment and it wasn't her fault life issues happened however having to let go a family member is much more difficult than having to let go a person who just dropped the vision therefore you have now picked up someone that you have to let down gently or you have the potential to let down gently because jobs change descriptions of jobs change as time goes by there are some things that a person that once began in the corporation used to be able to do that they didn't hone their skills and now they are no longer able to do that anymore not at the skill set that is required to do a good job so let's just say we cover family so knowing that you can still make a decision about if you have a family member that would fit the bill. Friends. You can potentially have a friend that started with you. 
You could potentially have a friend that has the same mindset as you. You may even have a friend that is in business with you that started with you. But I'm going to tell you why that's a sticky situation. Because as businesses grow and develop, there comes a point where you have to make very serious decisions. So if your friends are not in that same mindset with you as far as if you're a minimalist or if you want to spend a lot of money and, and you want it to look a certain way or if you have the Steve Jobs, the Zuckerberg mindset where you'll do, you'll build it in your garage and just kind of walk on faith. Another entity in its entirety is walking on faith. Are you a faith walker or are you just a shit talker? That's another group of people. You have some people that can tell you and talk up an entire vision or tell other, others how they should maneuver and operate theirs, but they don't even have their name signed to an LLC. So you have to be careful if you start with somebody that the entire mindset is the same. Either you're, uh, I'm going to wear baseball caps and, and t-shirts and, and stretch pants and, and jeans until we get them, until the money is here. The money will come. So you cannot, especially if you're true to your vision, if you're committed, if you've been in it for the long time, the money going to come. Don't even worry. Don't stress that because as long as you're committed and you have passion and you're handling business with morality, integrity, and character, and you're sojourning in truth, money going to come. Just know that. But what are you, what are you putting into it? Are you going to put in to it to wear a certain amount of look a certain part way a certain role or are you going to put into it just putting your good hard work are you going to walk to work are you going to position your two your two util your two businesses your store and your and your um and your office like within walking distance so you can walk and save a car payment are you going to position one of your brick and mortar so close to the ATM or to the bus or to the, the, the um, local um, metro rail so that you can get back and forth to your business via foot and to get groceries rent or whatever you need to do? Are you willing to wear secondhand clothes? Are you willing not to match every day? Are you willing to buy clothes like eight pair of the same stretch pants so that they're on sale for $1.99 and even though they have like winter quality, you're still wearing them in the summer because this is something that you've committed to doing and you don't care what you look like. What you care about is what your bank account and what your credit and your company structure looks like. Is that person you? If that person is not you, then you may need to sit back and really consider what does having your own enterprise not a business now see we're and if you're here looking to have a business then you're in the wrong place what does having your own enterprise what does that look like to you you're not building a business and if you're building a business and you go on over to Kmart Caldor Bradley Sears every place is closing but if you're building a enterprise if you're building your entire life your entire truth and that is how you know when you have a vision when you've lived it when the service that you're providing is a concept that came from your life is a concept that came from your healing is a concept that came from your development it's something that you can identify with on all levels of the operation of it then you have something that is worth fighting for that is a viable, profiting, structured, committed investment that other people will look at and say, hmm, I see the vision. Let's talk about Silicon Valley really quickly, guys. Are you guys aware of the great exoduses that are going on in, Calif um, in California right now? Currently, I know people that are that work for NASA coders that make six figures that are what we call RVers they're literally living in their RVs not only are they living in their RVs a lot of them are just living in cars some of them are just purchasing like $1,000 clunkers that can probably only have like 30 
thousand miles left of drivable life on them so that they can cut it out so that they can live inside of it because they've jacked the cost of living up for rent so high there that and the taxes that they're running out of that they're running out of California at record numbers. A lot of them are going right over to Nevada and they're saving like twenty thousand dollars in taxes alone. So the bottom line is and share it, give hearts guys if you're here. The bottom line here is that you have to stay on top of the millennial mindset. It is the millennials who have cut out a prototype that is going to help all of us climb into our future. If you look at the millennials, they don't need much. And let me just ask a question before you say, ew. Do you think that your ancestors had a stove and an oven and showers and all the special conditioners and all the do you think they had irons to iron their clothes and to look this part do you think they had that do you know that the man that created facebook zuckerberg daily he wears jeans and t-shirts because he says that he doesn't want to waste his energy trying to discern what to wear. He doesn't want to waste that energy. And here's another wise reason why just to wear jeans and a shirt. Because you don't want to promote any other label other than the label of business and getting it done. You don't want any identifiable label to be connected to your growth unless that label is paying into you and your business. At that point, You've arrived when you are not trying to look apart, when you're not trying to portray apart, but when you be, have become that part. If anybody sees me, sometimes they don't even call me Lark. Chastity, hey Chastity, Chastity, Chastity. I mean, I've become Chastity Child. The, the, the image is me. I live it, I am it, because it is my testimony. So I'm going to ask you before I go to do two things just two one I'd like for you to share this video if you know any young entrepreneurs that are looking to learn about an entrepreneurial journey from someone who is currently in it with proof evidence and the testimony to back up the journey share it and we also have loads of entrepreneurial 101 videos on our chastitychild.org which you'll find at chastitychild.com and we likewise have chastitychild.net. I'm sorry, chastitychild.net. Chastitychild.org is our health channel. Chastitychild.net, entrepreneurial and self-love encouragement channel for women in particular. Because I like to stay in my lane. As a woman, I cannot encourage a man how to love himself, how to take care of himself. But I can tell you how to get the money and how I'm doing it. And I can also encourage you not to fear if you are led or you have the desire to step out on faith, to do this, to give birth to your baby, to, to actually get pregnant with this baby. If you have the desire to get pregnant with your dream, with your vision, with your, with your entrepreneur experience, then you likewise have the strength to have birth, to have birth it and give birth to a beautiful enterprise. There's a show out that um, Taraji Henson played on, and it was called Empire. And I'm going to use that word for an example. When you're building your business, don't look at it as you're just building a small mom-and-pop brick and mortar on the corner. Because you could become a slave to that brick and mortar on the corner. You could be the one that's not making enough money that you can't hire nobody, and you have to sit there for two or three years and give up your life when you could be out on conventions meeting people um, popping up at pop shops and moving and shaking or get a movable um store brick and mortar so that you can be in more places to promote yourself depending on your product that might be the best route for you and if you look down in our entrepreneur 101 videos you will find 
that we go from everything from the brick and mortar to to the positive to the negative to the gains to the sacrifices to the consultants to the consultation um knows and pros and how to make sure that when you take this journey you don't make some of the mistakes that i've made i've not even done the construction <laughs> portion of it because i've had to do construction how to negotiate your brick and mortar how to make sure that you're getting the most out of making a decision and i'm making some of those mistakes so that i can share with you how not to make those mistakes so as always i ask you guys to keep me in prayer and i'm keeping you in prayer i'm inviting you on a journey i hope you come because it benefits us as a, a community of 2018 entrepreneurs to know how to communicate this mindset so that when i'm in business or when i'm at a convention and i meet somebody else and they're like you know what i lived in my commercial space too i started my business in my garage as well i walked back and forth to work as well my the first lady that is still in business today a herbalist in mount vernon that i met she had she was the first tea house that i've ever um viewed i'll never forget she said to me she said I don't drive she said I walk to work and she lived in Mount Vernon where it gets very cold and she said I don't drive I walk to work and I was like oh my god with my BMW parked outside like this lady is crazy ask me where's that BMW today and ask me how I got to my second office today okay I think I think you just figured it out 